Hey guys, so I decided to make this video today about the street legal ATV. Now, what prompted me to make this video? Well, it's the fact that I was pulled over yesterday by a law enforcement officer in Pennsylvania. And he told me everything turned out good to go. Now it was legally recognized as a motorcycle. And I guess most of you guys are probably wondering, how how is this? How can you do this? So, what I did is I went to dirtlegal.com. I have a little tag there and what they do is they register it out of state in the state of South Dakota so you will get a South Dakota license plate which will be registered as a motorcycle in South Dakota but now some of you might be asking about the certain day requirement for your state Pennsylvania you have 20 days to transfer to your home state from an out of state registration and title however you can be exempt from this 20 day requirement in the state of Pennsylvania if it is registered to an out of state business which is where you would have to make an LLC a limited liability company and what you do is I had Dirt Legal register this to an LLC in South Dakota and that makes this an out of state business registered motor vehicle and what that allows me to do is that allows me to keep these South Dakota plates on my ATV in the state of Pennsylvania legally. But now, the paperwork and the plate is not the only thing required to make this thing street legal. There's a couple other requirements you have to follow. So, one of the most expensive requirements will be DOT approved tires. And you can tell these are DOT approved because you can see DOT on the tire right here and it'll be in a circle that's how you can tell the tires are DOT approved now these specific tires I have a 12 inch rim I went with Interco Sniper 920s and these are in 27 inch I had a stock 25 inch now I, I know there's another company that makes street legal DOT approved tires or Interco Snipers was the best choice for me because they have off-road tread the other companies make less aggressive tread and I didn't like that and they I don't think they would last as long as these do. Another requirement would be to have at least one mirror. As per Pennsylvania state law, you have to have at least one mirror on your AT, on your motorcycle. And as you can see, I have two mirrors on my motorcycle. Now, this is on the deluxe winter fairing. However, you don't have to go all out and buy a deluxe winter fairing. I got this thing for the cold weather riding. I also have heated grips. Now I do have a single mirror that I run in the summertime. It goes right here where this bolt is. It just screws in there. And also what I did to do aftermarket lighting was I bought this multifunction switch on eBay. It wasn't that much. It came with the whole wiring harness with the turn signal relay and everything. Now, in the state of Pennsylvania, you are not required to have turn signals on your ATV. However, I have installed turn signals in the front. And what's good about these is that these are actually available from Can-Am. Now, they're not, again, they're not required for Pennsylvania, but I did it anyway, because otherwise I'd have to use hand and arm signals. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be putting my hands and arms off the side. Uh, another requirement is high and low beams in the front and you have to have at least one light with high and low beam no more than two headlights that are activated at the same time so it's fine if you have like a one uh, like a 1000 cc outlander that has two of these on each side and one's high and one's low that would be fine now these come with factory high and low beams so I'm good there and walking around the back you're required to have a tail light and this and you also have to have a brake light now some ATVs do not have a brake light in order to get a brake light on your ATV you have a couple options one of which you could put a brake light switch right here so when you pull the lever it activates the brake light simple as that they're really cheap on eBay another option is you can get inline pressure switch for your hydraulic brakes and what it, what it does is it activates once it hits a certain pressure so you if you really squeeze this lever 
it'll put enough pressure to activate the switch and activate the light. And then the light will come on in the back. And what I did was, you also have to do license plate lights. So I got a couple of these license plate lights down here. Really cheap. I think they were like four or five bucks for a set of four of them. And they're activated by my multi-function switch that I bought aftermarket. So I turn that on and my license plate lights will be on. Just like that. You also are required to have a horn that produces at least 120 decibels for a certain amount of feet. I'm not really sure. I just took a motorcycle horn off my motorcycle that I'm not using. And I just zip tied it to the inside of the front fascia here. And I wired it up to the multifunction switch. So all you do is hit the horn switch. You have a horn. Turn signals work as well. Like that. To the front. And now the rear turn signals, these are not available factory. They're $12.95 a pair. And what they call them is motorcycle reflector flashers. And they're most commonly used on motorcycles for the sides. Another option you can do, you can just get little LEDs that you just drill a little hole right here and install it there. Or you could do the same thing up front with your ATV. If you don't have these headlights, you can just drill a little hole like right here. You know, maybe down here where the reflector is, you can drill a hole there. And you can have, you know, a little LED turn signals. Again, this is not required for Pennsylvania. I chose to do this. But I, I like having turn signals as a motorcycle rider. More visibility at night is what I really want. Um, now, I was stopped by a cop yesterday in Lebanon. And they told me that everything turned it back completely legal. They asked me for my registration and ID. The officer first approached me. He was just kind of like, what's going on here? I'm confused. That's because I, I was driving down uh, a public road, uh, public highway, actually. And he had flipped around. Took him a little bit to catch up to me. And then he activated his lights and sirens. I pulled over immediately, like I'm supposed to. And he pretty much just came up to me and said, I'm confused. What What's going on here? And I explained to him that this is registered as a street legal motorcycle. And I offered him my registration and my license which I have a Class A CDL and a Class M with a Class M endorsement. So I offered him that. He took it back to his cruiser. He said he has to call one of his other officers who deals with DOT issues, DMV issues, stuff like that on a more daily basis than he does. So he wanted to get clarification. And I told him I was interested to know the outcome too because I really want to know if this was legit or not. And he comes back to me and he said, there's no problem. We don't have a problem with this because it's legally recognized as a motorcycle. He didn't even care to look at DOT approved tires, even though I had everything ready to go. He didn't care about looking at turn signals or mirrors or anything like that. At the time, I did not have my license plate lights on either, but I, it was also not dark out. You don't have to have them on unless it's dark out. So, and then I went there, I was going to a doctor's appointment and I go to the VA because I'm a veteran. And over at the VA, I was stopped by a VA officer in the parking lot. He, it wasn't an official traffic stop. He kind of just pulled up to me after I parked. And he was talking to me about it. He's like, uh, how is that illegal? I pretty much explained to him. And he had a bunch of questions about it because, you know, they've never seen anything like this. You were talking about officers with 18, 17 years experience. First one had 18 years experience. The, the VA officer had 17 years experience. And neither one of them had heard about a street legal ATV in anywhere in Pennsylvania. And they were just wondering how this was possible. And the VA officer also explained to me that, you know, the, he said, he actually said 90 days that you had to transfer it back to your home state. I told him that you're exempt. If you read the section, it says you are exempt if it is registered to an out-of-state business. I do not have to comply with that requirement. He, he didn't really, he didn't want to argue about anything. He just kind of said, okay. 
because he he doesn't know anything about it. And I told him to go check out DirtLegal.com if he wants to learn a little bit more about how they do it. If this is legal, you know, I I come up there every like couple months for a doctor's appointment and visits. So, I mean, if you guys are interested in this, if it's something not right about it, then someone should let me know. So far, no one's let me know. I've driven it down PA 61, US 422. And I think it was US 422 is where I got stopped at. Because it was weird because I was just going with the flow of traffic. With just an ATV on the road. And turned some heads. Uh, I haven't. State police have not pulled me over. They have gotten behind me before. I think they, they probably just ran my plates. Saw so it came back as a motorcycle and left it at that. Well, I guess that's all for you today. If you have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments below.